good, man. I'm good. Tired, but I'm here, man. You know what I'm saying? It's good to see. It's good to see, man. Thanks for coming through. I'm an engineer, sound engineer, whatever you want to call it, from West London. I've worked with a lot of drill artists mainly. I don't really do auto tune too much, but obviously I'm, I'm working on that. But yeah. Okay, okay. Um, which artists have you currently worked with? Have There's a long list, <laughs> but um, to name a few, I've worked with Fizzler, V9, you know, Blanco from Harlem Spartans, um, NSJ Mali, a lot of up and coming people, but a lot of people who are established as well. Wicked, wicked, wicked. And how did you kind of get into producing and engineering if you want to kind of. Um, I don't know, I just feel like it was a fun thing to start off with because I obviously back in the day I enjoyed the drill genre and I used to listen to it a lot even when I was like a bit younger. Like I'm only 20 now, but obviously when I was like 16, it was still coming up and all that, and I used to listen to it back then. And I started it for fun, because I wanted like, it was a thing where I would try and get bare like unreleased music and that. I was one of them, man, innit? And then obviously, one day I thought, you know what, this video thing is kind of hard, and then I got into that. And then, I'm not gonna go into that properly, because it's a long story, but once I stopped all that, my guy, S-Bands, who's an engineer, yeah. He showed me about engineering, showed me the ropes, obviously, the basics and all that. And then from then, I've kind of just worked my own craft and tried to build my way up, you know, you know, get all these connections and all that myself. I haven't really had too much help, but obviously people like Selector YB and all that have obviously helped me out with certain things and all that, and I respect people that do that for me. Okay, you said quite a lot in a short space of time. Yeah, so man. <laughs> take it back a little bit. Um, so obviously you said you, you go into videography for a short space of time. Yeah. How, how did you find it? I enjoyed it. It was it was fun having like a creative input into certain people's like uh, music and that man. I enjoyed like editing and filming and directing for when I did do it. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't get too far into it. Like the biggest thing I did in that was probably a Moscow 17 video. Yeah. But obviously, it was still a fun experience in it because yeah. through that I built the connections I had and I brought them into engineering. That's that's a nice little little crossover. Do you do you, do you, do you think the um the the videography and the Obviously, sound engineering or production element crosses over creatively. Yeah, sometimes, you know, because when I edit videos, you're thinking about, like, chops and all that, and I'm saying. Yeah. So when I came to it, over to engineering, I was having a mindset of what would I like to edit as a videographer in it and what would I like as an artist. Yeah. So I was not doing it for myself, but mainly for, like, the the artists, you know, get the their fans, like, hyped up and all that during listen, when listening to the song and all that, you know what I'm saying? And it gives the, vi the videographer more creative input into it. Yeah, so you're, you're helping us pretty much. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty much, yeah, 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 man. Literally. Um, so, in terms of producing the engineering, was it quite complicated to, to get a grasp of always when you were a quick learner? <laughs> I'm a quick learner. When it comes to, to learning engineering, it wasn't a long thing. Like, it was really short. Like, I feel like most people would try do it and fail to get a grasp, uh, like, proper like grip onto it, you know what I'm saying? But like the way I, I learn things is I have a very like photographic memory in it. So when I see yeah. something then I know that yeah, this is how you do it and I won't forget. Yeah, I wish I had that man, literally. But um in, in terms of artists that you is there any artists you wanna work with at the moment or um, wanna work with I wanna work with like Central C, I think he's hard. Yeah. I think, you know, Fredo, Lowski and all that, I think them are all hard. Like I wanna branch into like the rap side of drill yeah. and all that more because I feel like that's that's really where it starts like the money and all that yeah, yeah um, I want to work more like with like Blanco and all that because I feel like them man are really changing the sound of like drill and rap right now yeah. but I, I feel like that whole rap side of the the UK urban sound is really what's pushing it forward more than like the auto tune stuff for like DB yeah. and that so, so yeah what do, you, do, you, do you rate DB as artists or do you think they don't really doesn't really take much they're very hit and miss I'll be honest but no, nah, with the certain tunes that they they've got, like really, you know, I, I I like it personally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to add on to that. So, some of the tunes, I feel like, yeah, they're it's, doing too much. Yeah, but yeah. Um, and regarding the producing and engineering element, um, what kind of skills does it take to be kind of up there? A lot of patience, man. Mm. Because you get you get these studio sessions where people just don't turn up, you know people onto you for like mixes and that, you know what I'm saying? Like certain times you, you'll you have a session and then an hour later you'll get a mi message saying, yo, is the mix done? Like, it's not it's not quick like that, man. People need to understand that. There's a lot that goes into engineering, but people don't see it because they think you just chop up a couple of sounds, you know? Yeah. You move it around and that's it, it's done, but there's way more to it. Yeah, um, I've actually had um, another person that we interviewed, uh, 
um, saying that he found it a bit difficult to work with some artists. Um, so how would you explain how you go about dealing with some artists? Some artists are unserious. That's the best way to explain it politely. So obviously some of them, you know, they make all this music, but they don't release it. You know, they just sit on it and, you know, they just do music for fun in it. But then sometimes they'll just say, oh, yeah, they're, they're doing it seriously now, but they're not really doing it. You know what I'm saying? I, I like people that want to work and want to push out their sound. That, was, that will also help me in it and my brand as well. But I just feel like there's no point in just sitting on this music. It's like, you're wasting your money as well, in a way. Think about it like that. Yeah, that's very true. How, how do your collaborations happen, then, if you don't mind me asking? How do, you, how do your sessions happen? Is it mainly management or people reach out? Um, would it vary? Sometimes. Depends on the artist, man. Sometimes they reach out to me. Sometimes I reach out to them. Like, the best way to socialise, even if you're, like, a cover artist or a producer or whatever, is just DM people, bro, literally. Yeah. Just send yourself forward. Like, there was one time when last May, when lockdown was going on, everyone was on their phones like the yard. So I thought, you know, what, I'm gonna DM Bear Man, and I got connections to people like PS Box Twelve and all that yeah. just through Instagram and DMs. Like it's it's, it's simple as that. Yeah, yeah, literally DMing people. Some people forget the basics. Like, yeah, man, they literally, they think you have to wait. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They think you have to go to the to the guy's house or whatever. But literally DMing people using the the most the best of what you got with the resources you have. And also literally, you, man. You, you exploited the quarantine period by by hitting it hard. And yeah, trust so, me. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But again, in regards to certain genres, you obviously mentioned kind of rap drill to an extent. Yeah. Where would you want to cross over into if there was if there was an option in terms of genre wise? Um, I don't know, man. Like I just take everything as it comes to me, innit? So like, man, don't mind one doing one session that's drill and it's straight after doing a rap session. Like I don't have like a day where I want to do one certain certain thing, innit? I'm very versatile with how I do it. Yeah. Like. Obviously, there are some days where I want to come in here and get some artists in here that do auto tune on that and just yeah. you know just bang that out. But I feel like it's just time; you can't rush that in it. And yeah. you know, when I I wanna, I don't want to sound bougie when I say this, but I want to set a like a level to myself in it. But I don't want to work with just people who are unserious, man. Trust me. Like it is cool getting all these all the P's and all that, but you know what I'm saying. But I want, I want a, a firm clientele which I know is reliable and will come back yeah. and respects me for what I do. End of the day, you've got to value your, your growth, your time. So yeah, you, these are the traits that you need to. The the, the better you get, the more you realize that oh, this this is what I need. I don't really need people that are just coming in for one offs. You know what I mean? You want yeah, hundred percent, man. Yeah, you wanna yeah. have it there so you know if when they shout you, they're coming. Like yeah. they're not gonna be like they're not gonna just air you for like a week or something and say, oh yeah, sorry, I was busy. Like you yeah. don't need that. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like in those situations, a lot of people kind of get starstruck. But at the same time, you gotta respect yourself. Like, yeah, man. Of how 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 big they are, you still gotta be like, yo, this is yeah. This no, is time. when mentioning stuff like reactions like starstruck and that's like when I meet these artists as well, like the bigger ones, I don't even get like hyped over it. Like certain man see them and they're like, oh yeah, what can I get a picture of them for the gram? But I don't even care about that. Like I'm, I don't even get too gassed at them. I follow me back anymore. Like yeah. back in the day, I would, yeah. but not anymore. Like I feel like you just gotta. The studio's a getaway for these man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you don't want to act like a fan around them because that's what they're trying to get away from in a way. It sounds bad, but obviously they want to live a, a private life as well. And the studio is part of that. Yeah, no, that's, that's a very good insight because a lot of people may not know that. That's a very good insight. A lot of them use, like you said, the studio or the sessions to, yeah, to man. get away from, from all this hype. So that's a, that's a very good insight. Um, in terms of yourself, um, let's say the younger version, what advice would you give to yourself? Let's say the, the, the 15, 16 year old take up engineering quicker man obviously i've only been doing this for it's not even been a year yet man honestly it's not even been a year i started in like april may last year properly so i'm still you know starting out myself but obviously i feel like i've been very blessed to be in the position i am and do what i do and meet the people i meet so yeah. This is not just to myself, but it's to anyone trying to do it, innit? Just set straight and, you know, even if it means you don't live in London, you have to come all the way down just to do studio sessions, do it. It's worth it in the long run. Car, you will, any money that you spend, you will see it back. I promise you that. How important do you reckon discipline is? Because I'm presuming it comes into play. <sighs> yeah, man. There's a, there's a long list of things about discipline. Like, there's a lot of, like, side things you need to be like, you need to act and do, you know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a, lot, there's a lot of little, I don't know, I don't know the words to explain it, but like, there's a certain way to present yourself in it. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Yeah. And in terms, you mentioned that um, you were kind of working on, well, you want to brand yourself in the right way. How do you kind of go about branding yourself as a producer for, for those that may want to take it up or are currently looking to? Just 
stay professional like don't be petty in it like if someone uses something of yours and then changes it don't be petty over it you know what i'm saying don't get jealous of other people if people are doing well support them as well and they'll support you treat people the way you want to be treated you know what i'm saying so a man will dislike other people because you know they're they're just either hating on them for no reason they're jealous or they just want to work with them but they won't or something like that like it's petty man i feel like everyone in this industry just needs to get along i can't lie because at the end of the day we're all doing the same thing there's a lot of competition between yeah man definitely like people would say there's competitions between people like me and bigs and scratch and bigs and fumes and whoever like there's, there's no competition like in the end yeah the only thing is that people will think that oh yeah there's a massive competition so you can work with the most people get the most clout like it's not about that man it's about trying to see everyone else you know what i'm saying 100%. as well as yourself 100%, 100%. and working towards the future um, where do you kind of see yourself? Would you be still within the engineering, but in a, obviously at a higher level? Or I'm trying to take it much further, man. Obviously, I've done I've m I've done so much more than just engineering. Like yeah. I've I've done the videos, I've managed artists, I've managed producers, I've done A and R, and I've done it all. And I feel like I want to take that you know that label side of it as well much further. Cause I feel like I find a lot of talent quicker than most labels because I'm in the studio with them and they shout me. And who knows, I could come across to like the next you know. Central Sea or whatever, just by coming, them coming here and being a small artist and just recording with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I have like, access to the, the talent that the labels can't see. That's a very good point. You're more like, I'd say, you can see at a grassroots level. Yeah, literally, man. Literally. I try and help them out, you know, put them on. When I start my free star series, then you'll see that. Yeah. Trust okay, me. Okay, okay, that's what's up. <laughs> you heard it first. You heard it first. No shots. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's important. Obviously, you've, you've recognised the, the, the fact that you can see at a grassroots level compared to the labels who may only see it at, at a later stage. Yeah. And obviously, you touched upon the, the kind of back end business element. Um, how important is, is this business to yourself and how do you kind of manage? Um, certain elements, so obviously producing, um, royalties, getting paid, etc. Yeah, man, just keep it honest, innit? Don't dodge the point of car. Certain man will be like too shy in a way to ask for about money and royalties and all that. Just keep it straight, like, yeah, cool, this track's hard, how are we going to do this? Let's say they didn't pay for the session, but they give you a cut of the tune, that's still enough, you know what I'm saying? That's how I may do it sometimes. That's, mm. I may just take money up front, da 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 da, like. You gotta present yourself in a way that suits the artist as well. You gotta think about the little things like are they signed? Do they have big management? All that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like everyone in the industry thinks about that. Like certain men in the industry will see an artist is signed to like Warner and then charge a stupid price compared to the other people just because they're labels and they can rise up money, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Obviously you've put a lot of time and effort into the craft and you'd have to do obviously research before the artist comes in and charge accordingly. No. Um, so when it comes to pricing or when it comes to um, similar eminence, a lot of people are afraid to kind of ask for whatever they need to Yeah, ask. man, I've, I've noticed that. A so a man will message me and then like, do like, I have to tell them the prices before they you know, that it's like they're shy to ask it, you know what I'm saying? But like, I feel like just, I don't personally put my prices out there too much. Like, I don't have like a whole graphic about it and all that because I feel like, that would they'll see the price and they'll be like, nah, yeah. straight away. You want to at least build the line of connection first, you know what I'm saying? And that's where you can they may come back to you in the future if you already have that line of connection. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how do you keep artists coming back? Would it just be My mixes, man. <laughs> okay. Straight up. <laughs> yeah, straight my up. bro, I feel like I'm levelling up every single time man. like yeah, I can show you stuff from May to to now, like there's a massive difference. Like every time I do a session I get better. I know that for real. And I know like it's, it's things where like I'd, I'd mix that in and I'd go home and listen to it on my headphones and my airpods and the like okay cool this needs to be louder this needs to be quieter then I remember those levels yeah. and then I'll use it to improve myself for the next one yeah. you know what I'm saying and that's how I get people to come back to me because sometimes if I feel like I haven't done the job right I ain't gonna just keep keep that there I would do it again and tell them yeah cool I didn't like how I did this this that that I'll go back do it again yeah. and then say okay cool how's this sounding because I personally like this you know what I'm saying and even sometimes artists come to me with beats that aren't it's like the best like certain things will be like our key and all that stuff and i'll help them get other beats and all that i'll, I'll bring in my guys personally that like, i know I'm like yeah cool these guys are hard put let me send me some of your beats and i'll put it on this thing for the artists and show them and, and i'll help them get their placements as well you know what i'm saying like, i'm not in this for myself i've got a group of people surrounding me that i'm trying to bring through as well yeah no it definitely sounds like you offer like 
whole package of very big service for the artists going far and beyond. Yeah, man, like see. certain produ engineers and all that, they won't offer you like, oh yeah, I got another beat that'll suit this tune really hard. But I have that. I have like my emails are full of beats with bare yeah. different producers, and they, I send them my email and they just send it through. And then whatever I feel like suits the tune, then I'll put that on the. And you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I don't, I don't like mediocre music, honestly. And I try my best to make sure every tune and every song that an artist brings here comes out the best it can be. Yeah, I feel with that energy, you can you can definitely get a lot more out of the session. Because obviously some producers may only just come in; they won't take the artist seriously, and the artist falls away. But for like yourself you're able to offer that service. So when it comes to you, they, they have to be more serious. Yeah, literally, yeah, like, more, I can, if an artist wants to produce on a session, I can make that happen. Like, I know yeah. so many people, I've met so many producers, probably more producers than artists. I know so many, I'm in the community, certain people don't like me, but it is what it is. Everyone has hits, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%, 100%. When you, when you mentioned managing artists, how, how, how was that like? Was it, was it something like you? It, was, it wasn't long term. I managed Cavelli for a bit before he went on to do other things. But obviously, I still chat to him. I still help him out. You know, I still mix his tunes occasionally. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's still a love there. Like, just because I don't manage him anymore doesn't mean I'm, I'm not going to, I'm just going to push him out of the picture, innit? Yeah. But right now, I'm, I'm still managing, but I managed two producers instead who have worked with like Abracadabra last year and all them people that there, like AM and all them people. So, yeah. Is there anyone you want to shout out currently that's obviously in the camp working on? Um, there's a lot of names, man. There's a lot of names, but all I can say is shout out my uh, creative group, uh, creative collective, as I call it, Endeavour, you know, full of producers like Zenith, Miracle, Hills, Sensei, Sin, and a lot of other people. I just big up to all them, innit? Where can they find you on socials? Uh, at Engineer Mizzy on Instagram and Twitter, and MZY2T on Snap. And how do artists get a session or how did they impress you so much so that you're like quit Swing me a DM on Insta man. Uh, That's all it is man. I'll tell you the price is you send the deposit, we'll make it happen. You know what I'm saying? No long age. No problem man. Thanks for coming through. No, no problem man. No problem man, honestly. It's cool man.